and here I am hello everyone all right so uh, let's start oh that's light that light thingy let me take the, turn that off So I see um, uh, Samantha says no. Samantha, what's up? Why not? Um, it just looks a little bit overwhelming. I, I missed last class because I had to take care of my son, so I wasn't able to join. And I watched the lecture. <laughs> okay. But it looks kind of intimidating a little bit okay it's, it's and it's going to get more intimidating as as we are going through it so uh op24 for samantha is mostly concept so as you see when you look at the codes they are like a single lines of code small little codes in each function as it goes through but it's the concept that is intimidating and i understand it 100 percent. so uh, my remedy for that is that whenever you have an hour or two that you can spare we can sit together and I'm gonna take you over it from the beginning and re-explain everything to you privately how about that okay sounds good thank you sir all right so um, bear with me and stop me when you see I'm talking gobbledygook and tell me what's wrong and I, let me explain it and uh, believe me when somebody has problem and they stay quiet when you feel that you have problem, trust me, half of the class have problem. And you're the heroes going to stop me and make me explain those 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 things that are uh, crazy. OK, <clears throat> so before we begin, I am going to go back to what we have done. The last thing that we have done in a container, I'm going to review that. So I'm going to remove the this one. I'm going to open. This is the last thing that we have done in class. Okay, so we created a container. First of all, the whole aspect of uh, encapsulation for us was to uh, put the data and the behavior rel relative to that data into a package so it, that package can actually do something for us. In our case, over here is the container. So the container is the one that you pack at the data and behavior so you can have a container now this container of mine of course not leaders for this it better be cc's but anyways it takes that many that that much amount of value in it that it has that much volume it can have certain amount in it and the thing in it will be coffee so this is what what i uh, call a container of any type of container and to actually uh, to, if we encapsulate this container and do stuff with it, I have created a class over here and I said I have amount, I have volume, and I have uh, uh, some content in it. I can display and read it. For now, I'm putting these things. As we are going forward, I'm going to get this container and start adding features and, 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 and more capabilities to it so it can actually uh, replicate the container. So you, we're going to get to a point part that you can actually pour the content of one container to another we're going to simulate that one too we're going to write all those things but we uh, are, do we understand what the container is so it has certain amount in it it has certain volume in it and it has something in it are we okay with the attributes of the container <laughs> Be quick in respond, responding to the poll. Um, all right. So if so, from now on, I'm, when I do a poll, I wait for like three, four, five seconds, and then I'll stop it if the poll doesn't go through. Okay. Uh, it means that you can't see the poll, or you just for some reason logged in and you're gone, which I don't understand why. But anyways, so <clears throat> to actually have this container, I need to be able to set things straight 
to make things work properly because a container as is as you see over here to have a blank container I need to have things set in here because the variables by default in a compiler they have garbage in them I need to set those values to certain proper things before I can actually start using the container so I have to make the amount zero make the volume zero make the content blank so it doesn't point to anything dynamic memory allocation make it blank and that's what I did over here so in my init function I'm saying the content is null the volume <coughs> the amount is zero the volume is zero so essentially when I start my code when I create a container first I initialize it to make sure I have a clean ready container to use then after that um, I can actually use it which is kind of reading it so I'm gonna actually read something from uh, into container what do I do I create a local variable and take it as big as amount that that somebody can enter it doesn't matter how big it is we know that uh, because I'm doing dynamic memory allocation I'm gonna copy that thing and, and adjust the size exactly to that so uh, the the how big is uh, this temporary value is not important it's only in the read and it's gonna die right after the, the read is gone so I don't need to care about it so I get local values in my read for the attributes that I have then I'm gonna go through these things one by one and get the values and if everything was received successfully then I'm gonna insert them into the data uh, into attributes of the of the container otherwise uh, I'm gonna uh, let the C in to be in a failure state so somebody can so whoever called C in can actually detect what happened and uh, and um, remedy the problem do we understand what are we doing it in, in read <laughs> Let me put it in this way in, in answering the poll. So if your answer is no and you want to ask question, be quick because, again, in five seconds, I'm going to remove the poll. And if you don't reply to it, then um, I don't know that you had problem. Okay. All right. So. <clears throat> So now we have the read. So I'm going to have the local variables over here. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to issue a label. This is container entry. Then I'm going to show, ask the user, prompt the user for content. Using get line, I'm going to put the information up to 256 characters into content. Remember, get line includes the null in the size. So when you do get line something like this, it's going to get 255 characters. And the sixth one is going to be in uh, uh, place. Uh, will be placed for now get line is successful if the data entry is done before the 256 characters and if it becomes more than 256 characters it will put the 255 in the content null terminated but then it fails C in it's gonna say hey you told me it's maximum 256 I got 255 of it and I held it over here but because you had more I'm failing you did not follow uh, uh, what you mentioned over here. Are we okay with this? Therefore, after doing something like this, I'm going to simply say, hey, if C and didn't fail, which they entered something less than 256, so I'm good to go. So I can actually show the volume, the prompt for the volume. So if didn't fail, ask for the volume. Why didn't I put C in in an if statement? The reason is that a failed C in won't talk to you. Because of that, I don't need to worry about it. If C in fails, this C in won't do anything. This C in won't do anything. So I don't need to put them behind an if statement. But prompting for the volume, I need to do. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, if C in didn't fail, prompt for the volume. Get the volume. If the user entered the value sanely, then again, <coughs> sorry. Then again, I'm going to say if uh, if everything's good and CN didn't fail, volume was read successfully, get the amount. Then I'll get the amount. Then I'm going to check, make sure, correct the amount, make sure everything is good, and then set the amount to the volume or whatever it is. Uh, and then uh, 
<clears throat> make sure that the amount is gr is not greater than volume if it is I'm gonna make it to be greater than volume then I'm gonna set f uh, then I'm gonna check to see if seen is fail if seen was failed in any of these cases I'm gonna say invalid container information entered now at many times you don't do this at all you just let it be in a, in a failure state and the caller program will check the scene after doing read if it fails then uh, they know it failed so and they can put the proper message over there if needed so just uh, again depending on your logic usually you don't do this in read because read is not supposed to print anything as an output so mm, it's an iffy thing okay and as you see I'm saying not sure if error message should be here but anyways and then I'm gonna uh, if everything else is good now I'm gonna uh, allocate memory to the size of content copy everything right over there um, set the volume set the amount everything is good and I'm gonna get out this one has a bug but first of all are we okay down to this point <laughs> Anvi, what's up? Sir, why we use the scene again for amount? Like in volume, it's okay, but why we used in amount? You're scene not fail, a uh, not scene not. This yeah, one? this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's say, let's say you say volume over here. So user wants to put two hundred, right? But instead of two hundred, user put two hundred. Can CN read that as 200? No. No. Therefore, it fails, right? Oh, okay. So I have to make sure of that too. So after every entry that you are doing, if the thing is supposed to continue, you have to always make sure that CN didn't fail. Okay? Yeah. And also, another thing that I have to mention, another version of putting not CN fail that is easier to do is to just do this. So these both work. If you just put C in as a condition, C in is a polymorphic object. When C is, in, is examined as a condition, it returns its goodness. If you, if you ask, say, how are you C in? And not to say if it's failed or not, C in is going to give you true or false. True means I'm good. False means I failed. Okay, so C in is polymorphic. So if it is checked as a condition, automatically it returns the success. You will learn how to do all these things later on. Samantha, go ahead. Sir, so C in and C out have their own kind of functions, like the fail? Of course. C in is, a, you have a container, okay. container has its own functions, right? Mm -hmm. C in is an object of type iStream, and it has hundreds of functions inside. Okay. okay. So it is, an, because it's polymorphic, you use the... Uh, uh, extraction operator in front of it. So you're essentially saying if scene is at le left side of a extraction operator and right side is an integer, you're sending a message to scene to get that integer. If it's a double, it's going to be a double. So this is polymorphic with scene. But other than that, scene has many things. Just let's do this. Cn dot. Take a look. These are all the things that scene oh, wow. can do. Just take a look. Woo! You can. I can keep going forever. Okay, so it is it it is a, because all, most of the library objects of C++ are like this. They give you so many bells and whistles that you can modify them and forge them to whatever you want, and that's the beauty of object orientation. It gives you lots of options. Got it? Yes, thank you. No problem. All right. Uh, where are we now? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, that's another thing. We, you, you will see later on. You can, uh, we will see later on how we can have our objects like that. How can I have something like this to, to, to do something like this 
to, to write if, um, no, not here. But you can actually have, you can program your container to, to act like CN2. So you say if CNT, then it's going to tell if the container is empty or not. You can do this, but we'll come to it later on. These are easy stuff. You'll see later on how it works out. But anyways, so we write this kind of a foolproof thing and we set it up, but we, this one has a bug. The bug is that after the C in is entered, the last entry is done if it's successful. So let's say in here, the last entry for the amount is entered and it's successful. User enters 25. My question is, do you think after that entry, is there anything, anything left in keyboard after the successful entry. Those people who say yes, what is left in keyboard? Is it new line? Yes. <laughs> exactly. <coughs> exactly. Who said that? Sanchi. Okay. Yeah, that's it. My, my apologies for this. Uh, I have just I don't terrible cold and uh, it keeps coming up <laughs> all right and it's not COVID I tested it see proof so when I come over there don't be afraid this is <laughs> I tested it. it's not COVID it's just a regular cold so an, a new line is left over here so if a new line is left over here and I'm gonna call another read of container the first C in says get line and we know get line reads up to new line if that's the case the next get line is going to see a new line right at the beginning and poof it's going to stop working so it's a good idea right after everything is done over here i flush the keyboard so i'm going to say ignore 1000 characters up on your 10000 characters or uh, up to backslash n of course the first one is backslash n so that's not going to go but any garbage you have in the in the in the keyboard, it is going to get flushed. So the next time the read is calling, it's gonna have an empty clean keyboard to come to. So that flushes the keyboard. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Professor, when would we use cn.clear versus like cn.ignore okay clear is to apologize clear doesn't like, clear anything clear is you did something bad to cn you say uh, please clear your feelings there is no nothing wrong you can continue working ignore is to like, flush the toilet <laughs> <laughs> for the things to go down okay so to, with ignore, you are saying ignore these characters. It means it's going to start start picking it up and throwing it away. Clear okay. is to just say clear your status. It has nothing to do with anything physical. So we need to put the C and not clear then in the final if condition, assuming something failed? No, you, no, you don't do that. Because you have to let C in to stay in failure so the caller of read can detect it. Of read. You follow what I'm saying? Like, so, so we wouldn't have to... No, but but... Let, me, let me show you why. See, so this read of mine, let's say it fails over here, right? Mm -hmm. In CN. Okay? As soon as it fails over here in CN, I'm just going to let it stay at the position that it's in. Right. Okay? So let's... Or make it more descriptive. In here, I'm going to say else. Okay? So I'm going to put an else over here. I'm going to say C in, else in here, I'm going to say C out. What a bad thing. All right. <laughs> now it's better. Okay, so now I'm going to say over here, so because it's failed, right? I'm going to say bad volume entry. Right. Right? And I'm going to do like that. I don't know if I have to go to new line or not. I'll test it later on. And in here, if it... Uh, and in here, if it fails, Ew. oh, no, it's not bad volume. This is bad amount entry. Sorry. <laughs> bad amount entry. And in here, volume. Oh, this is actually bad volume. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My bad. Volume. 
this is bad volume because if it fails at this moment I'm not gonna say enter amount I'm gonna say what you entered last failed in here in the second one the first one in here I have to say else sorry in here I have to say else see out uh, content too long got it and right in here if this one fails instead of saying invalid content container information now I'm gonna say uh, oh, I actually I made it so difficult oh my god now I have to make it complicated in here I'm gonna say uh, bad bad amount entry there is a problem with what I wrote did over here. You know what it is? And I don't Not know if I have sure. to. You know what is, uh, um, let me just put new life for all these things and I'll. The problem is that because CN stays in a bad, I didn't clear this, the, the, the CN because I didn't clear the CN. If one mistake is made, so if somebody puts content too long it's going to print content too long then it mm -hmm. skips the c in because it's in fail state right yeah, yeah. then it's going to say bad entry volume then it's going to say bad amount entry so it's going to print all three right <laughs> On, yeah because of that fact then now it becomes more difficult i have to put a flag over here something like boolean uh, uh error printed and I'm going to set it to false. You but I guess I guess my original question though was more so like in that final like if condition or sorry like in line 48 mm -hmm. because that's like the last thing to check if it failed shouldn't we reset like cn dot clear there? No, like, you shouldn't that because if... that's the thing. Um, I'll explain uh, that. I wanted to explain that, but uh, oh, okay. it, it became a little too complicated. I'm going to leave it as is, and I'm going to actually write the complicated version so so give me two seconds let me let me do it as is as complicated one the next one i'm going to make it simple okay but this one i'm okay. going to finish what i started so in here if error message is printed so this else that is here i want to execute it so it becomes clear now in here i'm going to say error printed is true okay so for the second one over here i'm gonna say if not error printed if error is not printed print this one otherwise i'm already in a fail state correct right and in here i'm gonna say again error printed and in here again i'm gonna say if it failed if not error printed, print the C out. I don't need to set it to true because after this, no, no one is there to see. Okay? So let it right. be like this. Then I'm going to tell you what happens. If I clear the C in now, okay, I am fine because I showed the error message. Mm -hmm. So they know something went wrong. But the problem is that... how the program that is outside cannot detect if i if if this read went bad correct right Therefore, well isn't it a white function though or is it, it wouldn't is, return any so so let's that, let's do it like that now that i have done this if i come down here if i say see it see in here i'm saying if c in fail oh. do it if i clear it then how do they know that it's bad Oh, sorry, I didn't see that part. I forgot so, about that. So okay. If if you wanna if we wanna do it your way, if we wanna do it your way, then in here I have to actually make the read boolean and return the success. Right. But the proper way of doing it is uh, not to do that. Let them deal with it. Maybe they don't want to ask the user again. Maybe user has only one chance, or maybe they want to give user three chances to enter, and after three, like a password entry. 
So they want right. to count and see how many times the user is trying. So we want to give the caller program a chance um, to decide feedback. what they're going to do with the failure state. If they decide to clear it, they clear it and go back and do another read. If they don't, they don't. And yeah, that's it. So that's that's what I wanted to say. Uh, so okay, yep, cool, thanks. So uh, okay, so in here I am uh, I am ignoring everything, so it wipes out the keyboard. Um, so if I um, oh, and I only should do that if I'm in a success mode. Because if it fails, then they're going to cl clear the key keyboard, not me. Right? So if everything's good, if CN didn't fail and I'm good, I'm going to flush the keyboard. And if I am not good, the caller program is supposed to take care of it. Now my read actually tells what I what went wrong. So it becomes a little more sophisticated. So I don't I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but I'm gonna run it anyway. The heck with it if it works. So so content in here I'm gonna I'm not cannot put two hundred and fifty six so I'm gonna say over your milk. The heck with that. But volume I'm gonna put over here uh I don't know twenty. And it's gonna say bad volume entry. You see that? Now again it asks it again. I'm gonna say milk again. But this time for the volume, I'm going to say 20. And for amount, I'm going to say 10. Now it's going to say bad amount entry. So it actually tells to the uh, user, it gives a feedback of how everything happens. And if user enters everything properly, then it's successful and passes through. Is it clear now? Yeah, that was clear. I just forgot in the main function you had uh, that contingency yeah, so, for the clear. So yeah, so this is a very normal thing, uh, Peter and everyone else. This is a very normal thing to use the status of CN to get, send a message to the caller program to see if everything went okay with the entry or not. And not only that, sometimes, for example, when you are doing a validation check, so user enters a value, you're getting an age and a valid age is between 18 and 100, let's say. If user enters 15, it's a successful read. But for you, it's an embedded data. So some, I will teach you later on how to manually put C in in a failure state. So C in doesn't fail. C in actually reads 15. But you look at 15 and says, that's, that's not good data for me. I'm going to set C in into a fail state. So you manually set C into fail state to send this message to the caller program. Are we okay with this? <laughs> Okay, so now we have this thing. We understand how the container works. And the display of the container is the same. So I have a display over here that shows the container however I want and so on and so forth. I can actually do it with a row or without a row and all the good stuff that we have. Any questions now to this point? So we can continue to the lecture for today. Are we good? Are we good, everyone? <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Go ahead. Please post it on the net. Save it. Post on GitHub. Oh, right now? You want it right now? I'll put it at the end. No, 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 oh. no. After the class. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. After the class, you remember, remind me when the class is over. I'm going to put everything on GitHub, okay? <laughs> sure. Okay, so that's the initial and uh, in it and, cl and clear up better than uh, the previous session that we have done. So it's kind of uh, in a better situation. So let that be. Um, so I'm going to copy this and bring it back to the program that we had. And I'm going to now talk about, uh, I'm going to remove this, remove, bring the prg.cpp in. Ah, not that one. Uh, existing item, that's better. So this is the program we just had. We want, now we said that it is absolutely impossible for anyone to uh, to always remember to initialize something at the beginning and clean up at the end. So, and clear up, let's actually uh, change that to clean up. Because that's a better word. Okay. So, yeah. So, it's, gonna, it's impossible for people to call the init and clean up 
always at the beginning and, and at the end not to have uh, memory leak. So because of that fact, uh, each class has some kind of a procedure that you can add to it. And I have a question to ask you. I shouted something at the uh, thing. So you can actually, so let's, I'll do it, and I'm going to ask the question later on, but be ready for it. Because at the end of the class, like a clown, I shouted something in, in, in to attract your attention. I want to see if that shouting actually worked. So I said that to have this in it happen automatically when the object is born, you can create a procedure in here, not a function, a procedure. And that procedure has the same name as the name of the class. So you can actually create over here container. It looks like a function, but it's not a function because it doesn't have a return type. Uh, and calling uh, uh, of what we call this procedure a constructor um, will have a consequence that, that, that you don't expect. So if you try to call a constructor, the compiler won't give you an error. But the outcome of calling a constructor is not like a function call. It's a completely different thing. If you call a constructor, instead of calling something, it's going to construct something. It's going to build something for you. So be careful. It's not a function. So you create a procedure with that uh, with the same name. And then what you do in here is that in this procedure, you do all the things you want done automatically at the beginning. So in here, instead of having a function in it, I'm going to put the init in here since I had it already. And I'm going to put it in a private section, which means I don't want anybody to be able to initialize my container other than the... Uh, the, the constructor that will be called when the object is born. So will be called when the object comes to life. Right after, not when, right after. Let's put it this way. The object comes to life. So essentially, it so the, the object gets created, and as soon as it creates created, before anybody can do anything, the constructor is called so it can do stuff in it. And we have the exact same thing for cleanup. I can create a destructor that starts with a tilde, so you can put a con container. Again, this is not a destruct. This cannot be called. You're not supposed to call it. This is a destructor. Its job is to do something, and we call it a destructor. Now, destructor is not an English word, so many books refer to it to a deconstructor, but destructor is a common mistake that everybody makes, and I think now it's in a vocabulary, but we call it the destructor, and destructor will be called right before the object is right before the object is dead. So right before the object wants to die, then this is called. So all your cleanup can be done within. Okay? So you can actually do something you can write over here, cleanup. And again, you never want anybody to clean up for you. This has to be a private thing. And I'm going to put it up there. Now, the difference between the code here and the previous one that I've done is that, first of all, it won't allow me to call the init and clean up, but no worries on that. It will be called automatically regardless. So if I actually run this like that, and I come over here, as you see, it is about to be com about to come to life as soon as it comes to life it goes to the container and initializes everything and then it comes out and now everything is done so i'm just going to come right to this point to this place so i'm going to run it so in here is going to be water 220 and 220 200 so it actually reads the values it it prints the values so values are printed and now it is reaching to the end of its lifetime in the scope of the function and because of that right before cnt is dead is the destructor is called and it's going to delete the content that is did you see it's water so it deletes the content and the rest of the variables we don't care because they're going to get deallocated and begun automatically because they are automatic variables because double 
amount is an automatic variable, m volume is an automatic variable, m content is an automatic variable, they're going to get deallocated when container is gone. What was not automatic was what content was pointing at dynamically, which we removed, and therefore everything's clean and nice, and now we can end our program. Are we okay with this? <laughs> Faye, what's up? Where is Faye? Oh, Faye doesn't have uh, audio. I think he's connecting his audio. He said no. Faye, can you hear me? I'm sorry, Professor. One one thing too. Yes. Sir. I just checked the. I just checked the notes. Um, at the end of week four encapsulation, they say like uh, constructor and destructors are like special member functions. So that's the, uh, if I, it says something like that, don't do that. Special yeah. member function procedure, potatoes, potatoes. The reason that I do not want to call it a function is that when I do that, students start calling them and that creates humongous amount of thing. Remember that I told you at the beginning of the semester, sometimes I'm going to tell you stuff that are not 100% true just to make sure that uh, what I'm saying is done properly until you understand. This is one of those things. So when I'm saying a constructor is not a function, in an abs this is not 100% true. They are functions, but they are not functions to be called. Therefore, special functions, or as I call them, procedures. You follow? Got it. Okay. Yep. Faye, yeah, I just wanted to. Uh, yeah. Faye, I think Thanks. you have your, no problem. Faye, I think you have your microphone. Tell me. Sorry, I pressed the wrong key before. Um, um, I've, so for one of the, for the character array for content name, mm -hmm. you, you, you said it will deallocate memory itself. No, no, I didn't say it, it won't Or, or was there a function? Okay. So, um, this M content. So if I, if I look at the memory the way it is, this is essentially what we have, right? So if I look at it, I have M vol. Oh, oh, that's not the one. I have M volume, I, M, uh, M amount, M volume, and M content. Correct? Yes. But because M content is a pointer, M content is actually pointing to another piece of memory somewhere, correct? Yes. Okay. So when the container's life is over, M amount, M volume, and M content are deleted. So these things are going to get deleted by the compiler, by the program. What is not going to get deleted is your dynamic memory. Therefore, okay. therefore, in, I'm going to move this, therefore, in your cleanup, you say delete where M content is pointing to. This delete statement will delete this. And the rest is done. So here, this essentially deletes that one. The rest are deleted by the compiler because they are automatic variables. Got it? Okay. Remember, yes, yes, I see. Faye, remember see. that I told you that pointers are not special things, they are just variables? Remember that? Yes. I said pointers are not special things, they are just variables, but, but their content is a weird thing called an address, which means it helps you find some place in memory. When you say, and this is an amazing question, Faith. Thank you very much. This is, a, this is something that students usually have problems with. So when, when students think when we say delete M content, it's not M content that is deleted. It's where M content is pointing to that is deleted. M content itself is just a regular variable. It's going to go away. Got it? I see. I see. Thank you. No problem. And everyone else, uh, are we clear? We we just said we we understand what just happened. Oh, uh, Samantha. Sir, so the the deconstructor deletes the object that was made. Deconstructor. Like 
deconstructor is a place in which you put your cleanup code, no matter what it is. Okay. In our case, is dynamic memory allocation. Deconstructor is when you finish your lunch. Now, some of the dishes you should wash and keep. The other thing you have to throw away. All those things that you think it's needed to be done after the object is, right before the object is done, you do it in a deconstructor. Which I say destructor, actually. Are we good? Okay, that okay. makes sense. Shall. Yeah, I have a question. Delete is just a delete variable, not pointer. No. Deleting, not a, pointer. deleting a variable is wrong because variables don't. De, uh, wait a minute. Delete, when you say delete a variable, not a pointer, that's a wrong thing to say because a pointer is a variable. Okay, thank you. Wait, isn't this a variable? Yes. This is a variable. Yeah, this is a so I have three yeah. variables over here. The first yeah, one is this... a double. The second one is a double. The third one is a pointer. Yeah, pointer. Yes. So yeah, you delete, can... delete all. Yeah, you mean delete a pointer and a variable. Yes, you cannot delete a variable because they don't have addresses in them. But you okay. can delete the target of a pointer because pointers are pointing to a piece of memory that could be dynamic. Therefore, you, so again, we have to mention it properly. When I say delete M content, that's wrong. You are deleting the target of M content, not the M content itself. M content is pointing at some place. You are deleting where it's pointing, not the M content itself. Got it? I'm still confused. If I ponder to ponder, I delete. Uh... Oh, no, 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 no. Don't go to a pointer to a pointer. That's three, four, five. Okay, don't go. <laughs> don't go there. Okay, but okay. let me just give you this example. Okay, okay. let's say you. let's say you have a bulldozer, one of those things that they demolish building with, right? Correct. Yeah. Let's say you are your job is to demolish buildings. I'll give you a piece of paper, and I'm gonna say go to I don't know 55 Young Street and demolish that building. Correct? Uh, professor, I what still do, have, have, what do you have do? a question. If I, if I delete the pointer, the variable is still delete. Huh? You, did, if you I, didn't I let me a, finish my example. I, I made a beautiful example for you and you ruined it. <laughs> so what was the question again? Go ahead. Yeah. I, I, th I think uh, a think variable is uh, have a pointer. If I delete pointer, the variable is still exist. Of course. Or... I, I was mentioning it. If you have address of a place, and I'm telling you, go to that address. Okay? Yeah. And, and demolish the building. Destroy the building. Which one are you going to destroy? The address on a paper on the, or the building that you are demolishing? The building, right? Okay. The address itself is the piece of paper that is your hand. You didn't delete that. You deleted where the address was telling you to go. Okay, yeah, I, I know. Thank you. Yes, all right. So anyone else? Are we good with this? Good questions are coming up. I'm a happy man. Okay. All right. And the rest so, of sir, uh, when, uh... Oh, go ahead. Uh, when uh, the destructor will be called, it will clean up all the variables, but the address will be cleaned uh, separately. Yeah, that's yeah, we yeah. allocate them. Yeah, but just just think about it, okay? Like, uh, let me just go back to what I had. So, and let me just do like this, okay? So, so, so what you're saying is perfectly correct, but just put it in, in. Uh, so it put it in, in perspective, the variables that you created in here, as you see, you see these variables? Yes, because sir. you created these variables inside the class using the compiler's help, compiler will take care of them. The mm -hmm. variables you created yourself manually with a new, you have to delete it with a delete. Obviously all, and these are all called automatic variables. All the automatic variables will get deallocated automatically. 
Mm -hmm. They are the dynamic memory that you have to, you're responsible for. Are we good? Yeah. All right. So back to business. All right. So, so that's the, the constructors that we have written out. It's a constructor and a destructor. We know that. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is to clean up my code and put it in a, in a module so I can go further because like this is becoming a little too up and down and up and down so let's create the container uh, module over here so I'm gonna create a container module add new uh, oh, not new item I'm gonna say add new class okay and this class my class is oh and if I do that it won't allow me because it already has a class so I'm gonna remove this first remove and then I'm gonna add add uh, a class the class name is container I'm gonna click on OK so I have the class container then in here I'm gonna say if not defined uh, SDDS container and I'm gonna define it now <coughs> OK and then put the class right in the namespace SDDS and go to the header file to the CPP file and say namespace SDDS and now I can bring the code from the PRG.CPP right in here so I'm gonna bring PRG.CPP I'm gonna get the container code that's the class okay so let me just save this over here I'm gonna say uh, B uh, no arg constructor okay so I'm gonna copy this uh, I'm gonna go bring up the prg.cpp oh, prg.cpp again Where's PRG? there you go I'm gonna copy the code for class over here remove it completely uh, put it in a container.h so that's my class okay and because now I have O stream over here that is returned by display I'm gonna include IO stream we know that we are not allowed to use the namespace in a header file so in here I'm gonna say STD scope resolutions O stream just to make sure it's done properly then after doing this what happened to my namespace there you go after doing this I'm gonna go back to my container split the window and bring things one by one into the container.cpp so this is my prg.cpp constructor destructor uh, actually we need all these let me bring these constructor destructor init cleanup display read volume and all those good things are gonna come right over here so I'm just gonna paste it right over here there you go so now I have all the information over here I need to include the container so I'm gonna say over here include container.h over here so now everything is known in here and I'm gonna come back over here I do not have any scene or see out or anything all I need to do over here is to add the container because oh I'm using CN darn I have to bring IO stream too. So I have to bring the IO stream too, so I'll do that. And I don't need utils because I'm not using it. There you go. So cop save everything. Now I'm gonna save everything and I'm gonna bring PRG back. Add existing item. I'm gonna bring PRG back. So it's the exact same thing, but just modularized. I'm just gonna go um, control F5 and why is it not blue What's, oh because it's already running stop it and run one more time and there you go now the module is compiled and it does the exact same thing but with the module so are we okay with uh, converting the container to a module okay now that I have done this so in here I'm gonna say C main 
container dot cpp that's one of them i'm going to bring the other one back in and keep changing it so that's the first one first main we have now the next thing i want to do over here is this so sometimes when you are creating a container like a, when i create a container say i want the container to where is my display let me see display says if yada 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 So in here it says mm content. Okay. So let's say I want to do something like this. I want to uh, set a container like this. I want to create a container. I want to say my container is set to say milk. Something like that. So I want to set the value of the container right out of the bat and and just display and and have it like that to see to see what it's going to be. And I'm going to say, if I do it like that, by default, I would think that it's a three liter uh, milk thing that is full or two and a half liter that is full. So I want to have something like that. So I can say CNT dot display immediately right after with no problem. If I want to do something like this, I am constructing CNT. So it's initialization at the moment of creation. So when I do initialization, when I do assignment, assignment at the moment of creation, this is actually, is actually, is initialization and therefore a call to a constructor with one argument. So if you actually initialize something right at the beginning, you, you are saying build the CNT as a container with this value. So you need to have a constructor that accepts the exact same type of argument as one. So in here you have to create a container that accepts a constant character pointer and in here I'm going to say M content. And as you see, the error is gone. Are we okay with this? Now, when I create this, I can actually implement it easily. So I'm just going to implement this container of mine. I'm going to say, let's implement it. And in the implementation, I'll do exactly what I mentioned. So I'm going to say, when they actually uh, want to create a container with only one argument, I'm just going to allocate the memory for it so I'm gonna say M uh, con um, why did I put M content it's content not M content doesn't make any difference if you actually put M over here because that's the thing so um, but we'll see so M content in here is set to new um, uh, str uh, new uh, character str len of content plus one Obviously, what I need to do over here is to check to see if they are actually giving me something valid. Because it's a pointer, first I have to make sure that that pointer is not zero. Okay? So first I have to make sure this is not null. Which this is redundant because if I just put content, if it's null, it's false. If it's, it is not null, it's true. Then I'm going to say over here, and I have to make sure that I actually have something in it. So the first one is not supposed to be null. So this guarantees that this guarantees that content is not null PTR and has some C string in it. Because the first one is not null, it means it, it is not null and it has some value in it, so I can actually do this. Now that it's done, then I'm gonna say SDR copy. And what I'm going to do is simply uh, setting the M content to the value, uh, to the uh, content that I received over there. And just to, to make sure that if that thing is false, uh, everything is initialized, I can simply call the other con constructor right over here. And therefore, uh, if 
any of these is wrong, the container is going to be initialized to its initial values. Are we okay with this? Uh, could I ask a question real quick? Um, yes. So, uh, on line 12, what's the difference between the first condition and the second? Like, uh, if it was not null, what could it have in it this besides is, C squared? This is the difference, okay? So, if this is, if this is my pointer, if this is the content pointer, okay? The first one's going to go false if this is the situation, which means it's not pointing anywhere. It's null. Okay? So if it's null, it means it's not pointing to anywhere. It has null in it. So I have over here null. So the first one is going to check that. The secondly, the second one passes this because when I go and, if this is false, the second one is not going to get checked at all. Because compiler, you know that C C from IPC 144, the C language does lazy evaluation, which means if the first if the first value of a condition determines what is the whole condition, it's not going to even look at the rest. So if this is false, the second one is not going to be even checked because false and anything is false. But if the first one is not false, which means this is not null, this is actually pointing to some place. If this is actually pointing to some place, now it's going to check to see if the first element of what is pointing is not null. So if the very first element of this thing, if the very first element of this thing is null, it means the string is empty. What am I have to copy? What does it mean to copy? It's empty. Why do I copy? So. If that's the case, then I don't want to do any copying. You gave me an empty string. Something's wrong in here. Okay? But if there is something in here, or let's put it like this. If there is something in here, so I have M, I, L, K in here, and then I have zero at the end. Then the value of the first element is M and is not null uh, and is not zero. Therefore, it's true. So the pointer is not null. The content has a value. Let's do the copying. If they are both wrong, or if the first one is wrong, or if the second one is wrong, then there no copying is necessary. Liam, does that make sense? Yes. Though I do have one little follow-up question. So oh, if the second one if the second part can only be true if the first part is true, right? Like, yes, uh, the, the point second one only is not even checked. You don't, if you write over here 5,000 different conditions and the first one is false because it's false and it dies. This is lazy evaluation from C, which means essentially says this. So if you have something like this, let me just put it like this. So this is the, the circuit that we have. So this is a battery, then it comes over here, then you have a light bulb, then you come over here, then you have one condition that is a switch, and then you have the second condition that is another switch. Then it comes over here to light bulb, uh, to, to the battery. If the first condition is false, which means this key is open, it doesn't matter if this is closed or not. The circuit is not complete. Therefore, the second so, condition is never checked. Could we simplify it then by just removing the first condition? Because if no, the second one is true. No, because is no. Right that, that if if you do if you remove the first condition, this is what you are going to have. Let me show you. Let's say we remove the first condition. Okay. Let's say we remove the first condition. Let me just go undo. Will we get garbage values? Give me a second. So this is my pointer, and in that pointer of mine now I have backslash zero, which is null. Are we okay with this, Liam? Yep. Now I remove the first condition. You are saying if content zero, which means from content, go to some place and see if that location is zero. There is no some place. This is zero. You're going to crash your program having a message null pointer assignment. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So it will first, crash. you have to make sure it's not null. And then you have to see what is the content. If it is null, there is no content. I can't check anything. 
Got it? Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Thanks. Okay. So, uh, so uh, I'm going to come back to another. So does this code have any problem? Are we good with this code? So the uh, Professor, I just have a sorry Go ahead. Uh, i just have a quick question uh line 11 shouldn't we put this after line 16 or we like if the condition is false then we will go back to the initial in last in right so line six line, no, in 11, line 11 it says first let's clear everything up and after we clear everything up let's try so if this try happens the clearing will be gone and everything's going to be set up. I haven't even set the thing. So in here, I'm going to say M amount is, let's say, two and, two and a half liter and M volume is two and a half liter. So I'm going to say if, so first initialize everything and then overwrite it with the values that you want. So if this goes false, nothing will be overwritten, container remains empty. You don't need to write an else statement for that. Got it? Yours is correct too. It's just simpler like this. Okay, or, or, I see. All right, now my question mm -hmm. is, is this code correct? I'm going to wait for another 20 seconds. Let it digest. Look at the code. Listen to all my, remember all the screamings and stuff that I have done. Three people say no. Faye, Liam, and Peter. Could you please explain why? Anvi, explain why. Why is it not right? Because you don't want to call like a constructor or a destructor. They're not. Yes. Functions. Yes. That is a mistake. We can never call a constructor. This constructor over here has nothing to do with your object. This constructor will create a nameless container, set it to initialize and die immediately after. It's not a function. It's a constructor. This call has nothing to do with the values of your container. It won't do anything. Let me show you. Let's say over here I'm going to put M amount set to 300, okay? And I'm now going to actually run the program for you to see what happens. When I run the program, It comes in here, it calls a single con con uh, constructor, it comes in here, sets the amount to 300, so amount is 300 now. Now it goes to the container, you think that it's actually calling your con constructor, it's not. It is actually creating a nameless uh, container now. It initializes that container to zero, then immediately goes to a destructor, you see? It destroys that nameless container, comes out and continues. Your amount remained 300. You didn't change anything. Constructors cannot be called. They are not functions. Do we understand this? All right, so this is a mistake that everybody makes and they sit over there, start going through it for hours. Why the heck it's not working? Because constructors are not supposed to be called. So what do we do? Obviously, we don't do this. Cannot call a constructor. You can, but you need to know how, but not now. In here, you should say in it. That's why we have a function. Call the function. This is the right way. So initializations are in a private method. You call that private method and we are we are good. Xiao, you have a question? Xiao, do we have a question? No. No? Okay. All right, so that's that. So that's a single argument constructor, and now it's going to work out. So now I can actually run the program. It's going to initialize everything. And... Uh, do the allocation, copying and everything like that. Then it comes back and, and displays it. And I'm going to have a two and a half liters of milk in a container of two and a half liters. And everything is fine and dandy with this. Uh, are we okay with this? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, single argument constructors can be can be uh, invoked uh, at the moment of initialization with regular th uh, signature of it too. So you can you could do container container x and then write over here water. You can do that. It doesn't make any difference. It works the exact same way. X dot display. So this one is potatoes. This one is potatoes. The exact same thing, absolutely no difference. As a matter of fact, this can happen in anywhere in C++. So in C++, you can say, I don't know, double D, one, two, three, point four, whatever. This, is ex this means, this is the exact same thing as saying double D is set to uh, one two three dot three four five, exactly the same way. So again, potatoes, potatoes. I'm gonna put it like this, and I can say over here C out D, and it's gonna show that value with absolutely no no difference. Again, same as below. So single argument constraint assignment at the moment of creation is always a call to a single argument constructor. And we run this, you will see that the outcome is exactly the same, absolutely no difference. Are we okay with this? <clears throat> and you can extend and overload con uh, the, the constructors and to, to make it better too if you want to. So you can either do something like this. You can you can actually create, let's say, I want to have a container created with everything in it. So constant character pointer content. And in here, I'm going to have integer amount or integer, yeah, amount and integer, oh, sorry, double amount. And double volume. And you can set it up exactly as you did before. So in here, I'm going to say uh, create something like that. And I'm going to uh, create it. <coughs> now, here, when you setting something like this, you will see that it's redundant because you have code over here that's validating the setting over. Mm, ah, forget about it. Let's not talk, talk about that. So uh, we'll talk about code efficiency later on. We don't need to talk about it now. And you're going to learn it in a project, in the in a workshop when it comes up. But the constructor is actually created like this. So I can do the exact same thing that I have done in here, which is uh, uh, the exact same. Uh, uh, oh, le let's remove that one. The exact same thing over here. So I'm going to copy that and put it over here. And in here, say amount and volume that's a new version of volume let's fix that okay done so it's actually initializing it and doing all the good stuff that it's supposed to do and that's the setting so it's actually going to set it so um, and as you see now the code is repeated over here which is not good so in here I can actually copy this and create another function in here another private function call it void in it and have the exact same things passed to it so I don't have to write something uh, twice so in here is going to be constant character pointer content double amount double volume I create that create that in it thingy to initialize because the code is repeated any repeated code has to go into a function instead of uh, instead of do, uh, doing anything else. So I'm going to put the values over here so it's going to test it. Uh, it's going to call the other init function to set it to null. So now when I look at my code, instead of writing these two things twice like that, in here I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to comment all these and close it and instead says init content 2.5 and 2.5 and in here instead of doing this I'm going to say init 
content amount and volume and and that makes my code robust and modularized are we okay with this when you see repeated code don't let it be there immediately move it to a private function and uh, private method and do it that way so now I can actually add uh, the next one so in here let me just D I'm gonna say other constructors save that and open the program that's CPP just cleaning stuff up I don't want to have too many things happening over there so in here I'm gonna say container X and in here I'm gonna say I don't know oil or gasoline and and in here I'm gonna say 220 liters and it has 155 liters in it oh it's amount of volume so this is 155 and 220 liters and I will display it and it works the exact same way okay are we okay with this uh, professor yes just a quick question how else would you like um call uh, i guess you wouldn't call the constructor but like uh initialize like x like you know uh, how you well, did that i have to teach the next thing and you'll find out okay cool okay so <clears throat> what i need to do over here and that's a bad way i don't want to even teach it it's a wrong way of doing it but I, I am teaching it because some people, even some profs do that, that mistake that you may like, like having a break in a loop and having a continue in a loop. That's an awful thing to do, but many people do it. We shouldn't do it, but people will do it. So I'll teach it, but please don't learn to do it. Just learn how it works, but never use it. Also, I have to mention over here that universal way of uh, setting these things can work too. So you can actually say container and you can say over here, let's say Y and you can put like that so in here I'm gonna say oil 155 and 220 so that's these two are the same you can put curly bracket or braces and it's the same thing with the other one container Z and you can just put a single thing over here and call it water so now these are all perfectly okay Are we okay with this? All right. And I run it, you'll see they're all going to work and it's going to be the same thing. Uh, questions down to here. Okay. So, let's go back to the container and see what we can do in here. Now, <coughs> there are many times many times you want to do something and you want uh, to be able to cascade between things that are done um, for example uh, let's take a look at this read function let's say it and it returns void right returning void in a function I think it's a waste of return statement you sh you need to method sorry uh, ret returning void with a method is a is is a waste it's always good to return something in case it's going to be used now remember that like over here i am returning an o stream reference so display can represent uh the o stream and can be used later do we understand that samantha you said no why not uh I don't know. It just seems confusing. So uh, <clears throat> take a look in here in O stream. I am returning reference in display. I'm returning a reference of O stream. Do you understand the fact that C in is O is made up of O stream? Like when you say over here container X, X is a container somewhere in o, I O stream. You have O stream C out. Do you know that? yes okay so o stream is of objects 
is the type of CN. It's what CN is made up of. Therefore, I can simply in my display return the reference of C out. So essentially, display becomes an alias for C out. And because of that fact, because display after it's being called becomes an alias of C out, I can actually use it as C out and print stuff into it. And that essentially is returning a reference using a function, a method. Are we okay with this? Yes. All right. Liam, you said no. Yeah, I'm just like not totally clear. I don't have a specific reason why not. I just don't understand it. Let's 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 clarify it. So if I have integer ref integer i, and I have integer reference j equals to i, you understand that j is a new name for i, right? Right, an alias. Yeah. It's an alias, okay. right? So, what would be the difference if I do this? If I say foo integer reference foo integer reference x over here and I return the X. If I do something like this, and I say over here, foo i is set to 300. Do you understand that i becomes 300 now? Uh, See what happens. Yes. The reference of i is passed to foo. So X becomes a new name for i then x's reference is back, passed back, then foo becomes a new name for x. Foo is a new name for x, x is a new name for i, therefore foo is a new name for i, therefore i becomes 300. So if I say c out i, I want to separate it, that's why I put so many new lines. If I do this, you will see that 300 is printed over here. Is that clear for everyone? Okay, now that we have that, so foo can become a new name for an integer. What's holding you to make display to become a new name for O's for, for C out? It's the same thing. In here, I'm returning X as a reference of foo, in here, I'm returning C out with a reference of uh, O stream. Therefore, display becomes a new name for C out. Therefore, I can print anything I want over display, which is essentially printing it over C out because display becomes a new name for C out when it's called. Are we okay with this? Can you explain this again? Just the, what you explain right now. Okay. So, the display is returning a reference of C out. All right, Hanvi? Are we okay with this? Yeah. So anything that is a reference of something else becomes an alias for that, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when yeah. display is called, display becomes an alias for C out, correct? Yeah. Because display becomes an alias for C out, it will be replaced with C out when it's called. Therefore, your display will change to C out after call. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Your yeah was not very satisfying yet. Did you really understood what I just said? Yes, sir, but it's confusing. It is. Again, new knowledge is always confusing. But it is new knowledge. You are not used to have a function at left side of something. Use that left value. You always had the function at right value to return something, correct? Yeah. But now we are learning that functions can return references too. They can become new name for other things too. Therefore, now they can stand at left side of an, uh, uh, an operation. We okay with that? Yes, sir. All right. Now I'm going to actually make you even more confused. So let me first save this as uh, e returning reference okay now <clears throat> t 
take a look at this I want I want my read to return a reference of con uh, a reference of container I want my read to return the reference of the objects it's within do we understand this so because of that so I want to be able to do something like this something crazy like this just take a look I want to be able to do this I want to be able to say I want to be able to say then I want to be able to say x dot read dot this read dot display why because if read returns the uh, the the reference of the object that it's in after calling it will be x so it will uh, change to x display so when I do something like this this cascading effect will make read return the reference of the object it is in therefore the call will be changed by the name of x you can do more stuff right after as you go through it do we understand this so how do we return the reference of the current object we can do it with the help of a special pointer before we continue I need to clarify this with you if I have integer a in here and I have an integer pointer P that is holding the address of a P becomes a a variable that holds the address of a is that understood so if P is the address of a what is target of P if you tell me P is the address of a then target of P becomes what many of you is saying a that is perfectly correct somebody said address that is absolutely wrong P is address the value of a is wrong it is the a itself so remember target of P is a itself that's why you can actually say P is equal to 10 and a becomes 10 so if I say P is equal to 8 to, to 10 whoa what is that oh this is not done so I have to comment it for now and it's not gonna compile because it does hmm let me see if it runs if I actually do this no it's not gonna compile because I didn't implement this yet uh, I'm gonna take this back to void for now so I can compile this so if I run this a is it's gonna print 10 it's cl it's clear for everyone correct that it actually prints 10 let me make the font a little bigger so we can see what are we dealing with over here all right so what if I do this integer reference R set to a if I say if I say R is set to 20 and then I say C out a what is going to get printed at line 16 what is going to get printed at line 16 people are answering 20 which is perfectly good some people said 10 why 10 you made the a 10 at line 10 but then at line 13 you made the reference of a to become 20 so it has to change to 20 now the first one is 10 the second one is 20 if I run it the first one is gonna be 10 the second is gonna be 20 you put the reference do we understand this is that understood <laughs> all right now 
take a look at these two values. So I can set the A by target of P. I can set the A with reference R. This concludes these two. Give me the conclusion, putting these two things side putting these two things side by side gives me the conclusion that target of P is the exact same thing as the reference of target of P that is A is the same thing as reference R that is A. Do we understand this? So target of a pointer is essentially the reference of the target. Do we understand this? All right. Now that we have this, I'm just going to write it down so we remember what we said. I'm going to put it over here. Since this works as line 10, target of P is also reference of A. Are we okay with this? All right. Now, now that I know this for a fact, now that I know this for a fact, so in here I'm going to say F references explained again. Now we know, now that we know this for a fact, I'm going to tell you a keyword that holds the address of the current object. That keyword in C++ is called THIS, this. So when you say this, this in a method is the address of where that, me that method is in. So it essentially sends back the address of the owner. Now if I want read to return a container reference, what can I return in read? So in here I'm going to say container reference. If I, if I want read to return the container's reference at the end, what I can do at the end of this is to say return target of this because this by itself holds the address of the current object. When I say target of this, it becomes reference of the current object. Therefore, this is now returning the reference of its owner. Now, in here, I can actually write a program as follows. So, in here, I can actually write a program as follows. I can say container x So I can say X read display. So what happens is this. It runs. X calls a default constructor. X read calls the read. It does all the stuff read is supposed to do. It, uh, it does all the stuff read is supposed to do. Receives all the values and then returns the reference of the current object. So the reference of the current object is sent back. Therefore, x.read will be replaced by x itself. And now x.display will be called, which calls the display, and that display is going to actually uh, call the display function, and we are done. Do we understand this? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the reference of the current object. We can use the this pointer for many different things. For example, um, I'm going to write some bad code in here and tell you how can I actually fix that, fix my bad code with the this pointer. For example, look at this container. Let's say my container, I put the name of the variable by mistake 
the same name of container so that's M content and I'm gonna come over here and put the same thing as M content when I do something like this if I actually put M content it oh that that's not gonna cause any trouble what do I do what do I do where do I um, that's that's not a good example let me go somewhere else because I have a function over here no conflict is gonna happen it's gonna actually work perfectly so I'm gonna come back over here let's say this one in this in it I'm gonna set this as M content by mistake so in here I'm gonna have M content now if I put over here M content all over the place over here this M content is not the argument the the attribute anymore because it's the local variable and that local variable is gonna cause lots of trouble for me so and as you see over here if I put M content then you're gonna say okay which one is what so this causes trouble if you put the same name of as the attribute in a function that shadows the 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 attribute so M content argument will shadow the M content attribute rendering it inaccessible do we understand this now to fix this problem I need to where I need to have access to the content of the class not content of the object in here it is checking the M content it's fine in here is checking the length is fine but this M content over here Oh, oh I, I called it connects. Wait a minute. Oh, bad person I am. Content in current project. All right. Okay, good. So now if I come over here and I want to have the M content to actually be set properly, what do I need to do? I'm going to say, okay, this M content is supposed to be the content of the class. Because it's supposed to be the content of the class, I can say this and I point to it. So now it says the M content of this class and not the function. And the same thing over here. Okay, so in this case, very bad style for programming but you can resolve the conflict of name using the address of the current object that is this so now I can say <coughs> get the length of the content and put it in this content copy the M content to this content so this actually says put it in uh, the the classes thing do we understand this <coughs> and we're gonna have many other usages for it as we are going through but remember when you are in a method if you use THIS it becomes the pointer the address of the current object because of that fact I cannot say over here this let's say over here whatever if I do something like this it's gonna tell me hey you are not inside that so let's say in here I say integer a and I want to say this a this is not going to work out because it's going to tell you, hey, your this may only be used in in, inside the non-static member function. What are you doing? This belongs to a class. You are not in a class. You are in a standalone function that is not going to work out. So you this can only be used inside a uh, class's non-static methods. Are we okay with this? And that concludes the lecture for today. Any questions before we leave?
and just to make sure that everything is good right now I'm gonna first push this and then I'm gonna answer your questions anybody have any questions Sebastian you have a uh, you have a question okay bye Peter have a good battery <laughs> um, uh, it's September 27 okay so the codes are up uh, I will um, post the recording later on uh, any questions anyone yes Param go ahead Sir? yes uh, I just want to have one session online on Microsoft Teams. Right now, I can't. I have to go to a meeting. But of course, we're gonna. You can. You can talk to me later on. Oh, okay. Okay. You can. You can find me because I have to prepare for the um, uh, the thing that we have at sixteen fifteen the um, workshop review. After that, mm -hmm. I'll be available. All right. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, Liam. You said you have a question. Liam, you have a question? No? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Faye, are you okay? Everything's okay? I see people say yes, no, done. <coughs> All right, I'm not hearing anything, so have yourself a beautiful day, and uh, I'll see you hopefully on Friday okay if everything goes well and I don't get go bananas again have yourself a wonderful day people ciao for now